بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Okay, so inshallah today we are going to talk about the face recognition. So so far we have talked about uh, convolution neural network and the state of the art algorithm for classification and detection. So we'll see today that face recognition has special way of uh, training that is different from previous classification and detection problem. And uh, you will discover how actually now face recognition neural network actually work. So about the learning outcomes, uh, you will discover how convolution neural network can be applied to face recognition. And uh, it's pretty much different from the previous object classification and object detection algorithms. You will understand the concept of one shot classification. And here it means that we are able to do classification by just using only one instance of the object as opposed to previous classification and object detection problems where we have we need to have a lot of uh, images for every type of object to be able to do the training so we'll see how we can do this and also to understand the concept of CME's network <coughs> recognize the concept of triplet loss for generating face encodings and understand how to evaluate the similarity between two objects using convolution neural network these are the basic things that we are going to introduce in this lecture let me first start by a demo that we have developed in the uh, Robotics and the Internet of Things lab. Uh, most of you maybe know about this demo, but it's going just to introduce the application of face recognition and uh, how we can use it. So just a few minutes with the demo. So we are going to present you our uh, face recognition lab access. So here we have uh, a tablet, a smart tablet uh, with a web application. And it's going to take the picture of uh, any person, we send it to the cloud in the GPU server, it will be processed. And if the person is authenticated, it's going to send a signal to this uh, Raspberry Pi connected to the door switch. So let's make a demo here. I'm going to open the door. Now it recognizes me, I'm able to open the door. Okay, so this was a demo that uh, was developed by uh, Anas Mahmoud and also uh, Esar Habashi for opening the Robotics and Internet of Things door using face recognition. And now, especially with the outbreak of the COVID-19, there is more interest toward actually adopting these kind of solutions to avoid, for example, these kind of touch sensors that are susceptible to uh, make the transmission of the virus. So face recognition is already a very one of the most popular uh, one of the most popular uh, areas in deep learning and it's going to be even more and more important in the future because it provides a way to authenticate people without the need of any kind of uh, touching and it's being used now in uh, airports and it makes part from a general context that is co called uh, biometric authentication it means we can authenticate person by their biometric information by their face or their eyes or now there are some works also using the ear of the person to identify to identify him. Okay, so let's get started with introducing basic concept of uh, the face recognition. So the first thing we need to know and to differentiate is f face verification versus face recognition. So the difference is uh, a little bit minimal, but there is still difference in, in the sense that face verification is actually one-to-one -one lookup. Okay, you have a reference. Okay, for example, this is a teddy bear and you want to check whether a new image is the same teddy bear. Okay, so we are going to compare a new image with the one image in the database. Okay, for example, in the context of face recognition, you want to check whether this person is, for example, Anis. Like, for example, now in mobile phones. In mobile phones, they perform what we call face verification. Because when you open your mobile phone, you have already registered your uh, you as a reference there. So it's going to verify whether it is you or not. It's not going to check multiple users if there is only one user for the uh, mobile phone and face recognition is more general and in this case you have k persons in the stored in the database and you will make one to many lookup so if you have a new image you will check this image against all the others okay until you find the most similar one and then you will say that okay this new ob object corresponds to this object that is in the database that is the difference between face recognition and face verification Okay, so what's the problem with the traditional classification? So we have been doing classification now for during this semester. And the current process is that, for example, if you want to classify, for example, dogs and cats, we need to have thousands of images of dogs and thousands of images and cats. And then we will train a neural network and finally 
we're going to deploy it. So this is the classical traditional or traditional approach for classification. And this actually can work in, like say, several scenarios or most of the scenarios, but probably doesn't work in, in some others. Okay, let's look at one of the problems. For example, imagine that you want to just add another object, let's say a monkey here. Okay, so in this case, what you need to do, you need to collect thousands of images for this monkey, and then you need to retrain the whole network, setting your parameters, and changing even the output layers, because maybe in the output layer you have only two objects at the end, but now you have three objects. And what if your, your n number of objects is going to change? Like, for example, in the case of face recognition. Okay, you don't have only one person to, to, to recognize, for example, in a company. You might have, for example, 1,000 uh, employee, but uh, one day you have some new employees that will be hired, some others that will be fired. So your, your database is actually going to change. So I'm going to adopt the traditional classification approach. It's not going to be very efficient. Okay, if your uh, images and the number of objects is going to change during the time. Okay, also another issue is that what if you have only one image for, for every object? Now, for example, if you have new employees, okay, you won't ask them to, everyone to provide 1,000 objects, tell him, oh, okay, I'm going to train my neural network, so please provide me 1,000 image of yourself. Okay, this is obviously not reasonable. So there are some context that need actually, let's say, minimal number of objects to, to use it for training. And I remember, so I remember when I, w I went to JITEX in Dubai in uh, previous November, so I had to register online through a, a web application or through a web interface, and then I posted my image, my personal image photo over the registration portal. And then when I want to make the registration on-site in uh, the JITEX forum, so I just had to stay in front of a camera and and then so the the system has processed my image and uh, has identified as being an scuba and printed automatically my registration pass okay just from one image and this is actually uh, an excellent achievement just from one image you are able to identify persons even among thousands of other persons in the database Okay, so this is why traditional classification approach are limited in this kind of scenarios. First of all, the number of objects can change. So we don't want to change the uh, output layer. We don't want to change or we don't want to collect large number of images for the new objects. Okay, so as I already mentioned to you, one of the popular use cases for face recognition is, for example, access to building using faces. And uh, if you have a lot of employees, you, you want to provide them access with their faces as uh, biometric information. So in this case, you would only require one image from every employee. You would like to require one image from every employee, and this will allow you to identify him or her through the uh, using facial access system. So in this lecture, you are going to discover how we can do that and uh, how we can train a neural network to recognize the face of a person. So this is the basic concept of one-shot classification using what we call CME's network. And I will explain CME's networks in detail just in a while. But CME's network, it, con it consists just of two networks that are exactly the same, one here and one here. And they will take, everyone will take an image as input. And finally, it will generate an output as one dimensional vector like this that contains several elements. Okay, it can contain, for example, 64 element, 128 elements, or 256 elements, or any other number. It depends on how you want to encode. You can, it can contain either 10 numbers. It depends how many numbers you need to represent the image that is provided as input. So now, now let's just make a, a complete abstraction. You have a, a neural network and another neural network that is exactly the same. This is why we call it CMEs. CMEs like twins, twins people. Okay, same network here provide an input image, an input image, it go, is going to transform this input image into a uh, one-dimensional vector that we call embedding. And then it will compare this one with this one, maybe by making some comparison or uh, subtraction. I subtract this one from this one, and if it is smaller than a certain distance, then it is, it is the same image, or if it is greater than a certain distance, three shot, then it is, it is different. So this is the basic idea. 
So we are going to use the network for creating embeddings and then comparing between them. Okay, so this is the, uh, the approach. Now, instead of, for example, training the network to say this is, this is a football ball or this is a basketball ball or this is an elephant, okay, if you, if you follow the traditional approach, you need to collect thousands of images of football, thousands of images of basketball and thousands of images of elephants. But we won't do that. We will actually collect only one image and saying, okay, this is a football ball, this is an elephant, this is a basketball. And then if I take another image, I will just make the comparison. Is this one similar to this one? So at the end, I will expect an output that is either same or different. So it can be seen as uh, it can be seen as a binary classification. Okay, whether the input here uh, or the input image here is the same as this one. So for example, here the output will be th same. Here the output will be different. Okay, here the output will be the same and the output here will be different. So whenever you have any new object, what you will do, you are going to compare this object with all existing objects and we assume that you have only one instance for every object in the database. You will compare this basketball to the football, to the elephant, to the basketball, and then you will see which one of this object is closer to your object of interest. Okay, you can use it on general object or you can use it on faces as well, but for face recognition, that is the strategy. Okay, so this 